My mother-in-law is a witch, no other way to put it. We got married earlier this month and it was a beautiful day despite mother-in-law showing up in a slinky white cocktail dress. I'll admit I had some fantasies about a bridesmaid doing the red wine thing, but they are terrified of her. By the end of the night, her dress was messed up because she had way too much fun. There was a wine stain, it was all dirty and she was soaking wet. Mother-in-law very much partied too hard and did that to herself. My uncle has a huge crush on her and gave her a VIP tour of our grandparents' farm. I'm petty, so I took some pictures. When we got our photos, everyone told me how awful she was for wearing that dress, so I showed them how it looked at the end of the night. Of course, they wanted the story, so I told them someone spilled red wine on her, which was technically true. I smirked and said she ended up in the dirt and then took a tumble in the lake. My friends were so happy someone stood up for me. When mother-in-law heard, she called me pathetic and childish. She claimed she doesn't care what people think, but I think I embarrassed her because she then posted her own pictures in the ruined dress, trying to show off how happy she was. Am I the idiot for showing people embarrassing pictures of my mother-in-law wearing white at my wedding and letting them think the worst? Everyone's the idiot here. God, you're both children. It's alarming that you think it's cute to brag about having your gang of bridesmaids assault someone. You implied that they ruined her dress, knocked her down in the mud, then shoved her into a lake. Those things are all just gross behavior, not to mention criminal. If someone wears something inappropriate to a wedding and you're upset about it, you put on your big girl panties and ask them to leave. You do not have your cronies destroy their property and or assault them. That's disgusting, and you think it's cute? And while not criminal, taking pictures of your mother-in-law embarrassing herself to shame her later publicly is just childish. Does your mother-in-law think it's just so cool to show what a sloppy, intoxicated mess she was at her child's wedding? Look at me having so much fun behaving like an idiotic frat boy. Ugh, that's just pathetic. Really, you should be sad for her if that's what she has to brag about. And you stoop to her level. You both behave like 14-year-old mean girls. Where is your husband during all of this? He is on my side completely. They went from being close to hardly speaking, but I didn't want him to not have his mom there on his wedding day when he'd made so many sacrifices. He still loves her even if he knows they can't have much of a relationship. I didn't want him to have no one. His bio dad is vile. A mother-in-law is, for all purposes, an orphan, so he'd really have no family. I guess I wish someone had ruined the dress for me. She was having fun and wouldn't be embarrassed about what she did to the dress, and it kinda sucks she was having so much fun with my family. She played witch games and then won witch prizes, and those photos will be a constant reminder of that. However, it sounds like your mother-in-law isn't the issue. Your husband is. Inviting someone he was hardly speaking to was a recipe for disaster. Get her out of his life. Help him. Sometimes, having no bio-parents around is better than pushing your partner into having a terrible bio-parent around. How do you go from rude, witchy mother-in-law to her husband being the issue? Do you think he bought his mom her dress? Did OP say he was angry about OP showing the pictures? No to all of the above. Honestly, everyone's missing the point of the wedding day. Celebrating your union, not nursing lifetime grudges. While mother-in-law's behavior was out of line, the energy spent on this drama is energy not spent on your relationship. It's time to refocus on what truly matters, you and your husband. No one comes out looking like the victor in these petty wars. Move forward, love each other, and let the mishaps of the wedding become faint, ludicrous memories that barely register in your decades of marriage to come. Remember, the best revenge is living well and without giving her antics another thought. My son is almost a toddler and in the 97th percentile for height. He's a big damn baby, currently 36 inches tall or about the size of your average two and a half year old and in 3T clothing. However, despite being so big, he's still just a baby and most of his nutrition is still from breast milk. We had a big family cookout for the weekend and my brother invited his girlfriend, 19. I live out of state and I didn't want my flights to be too close together so I'm staying for a bit longer. My brother and his girlfriend are doing the same thing. My family is aware that my son is a baby, obviously, but my brother's girlfriend wasn't and was initially very shocked when she saw him misbehaving. We explained that he's still a baby, so he's still just exploring the world. She remained uncomfortable, but we mostly avoided each other. Because he's so big, feeding him is a chore, so I use an armchair as there isn't enough support elsewhere and there isn't much I can do about covering up. He gets sweaty under blankets and won't eat. 
It's been a tense couple of weeks. Last week, I think we both kind of lost it. My son needed feeding and she was in the chair. I asked her to move, which she whined about, but she did get up. Everything was fine for another hour or so until she demanded my brother pay for her to go to a hotel for the remaining nights because she couldn't cope with me and the baby. He asked what she meant and she said that he's clearly big enough to be on real food and I enjoy making her uncomfortable by feeding him in front of her. I got embarrassed and told her to keep her mouth shut because she clearly doesn't know the first thing about parenting and certainly doesn't know anything about me or my son. We argued the same points for a little more until my son woke up from his nap and I left to collect him. She then left after telling us all loudly that she needed to protect her peace, which is honestly not a phrase I thought real people said. My brother told me I was being immature and left with her. My dad is on my side, but did tell me I should have removed myself from the situation as I'm a grown woman and she's still a teenager. I'm three years older than her, so I think that's BS. My mom is neutral, but is still trying to convince my brother to come home and ends up paying for their hotel. She thinks I could have been a lot more understanding. Am I the idiot? Was I completely out of order? Her peace is disrupted by a baby needing to be fed. How sad for her. Not the idiot. If she's so shocked that babies can come in different shapes and sizes, she'll lose her mind when she finds out they come in different colours too. Yeah, I would just have been rude and told her that in case no one told her, the boobs attached to her chest were put there to feed babies. God forbid women use their breasts for what they're designed for. But to be fair, I'd be weirded out by seeing a 36-inch, 90-centimeter baby breastfeed too. Almost a year old. Some babies are starting to walk, and this kid is as tall as a kitchen counter. Weaning is personal, and if you're not involved, you can just leave the room without throwing a fit that you need a full-on hotel. OP, your brother thinks you were being immature. His girlfriend is the one getting the vapors at the sight of a woman breastfeeding her baby. If she can't deal with the sight of something that offends her, maybe she should go stay in mommy's basement until she grows up. And what exactly does your mother think you should have been understanding about? Her discomfort? I despise people getting all up in their fifis about, oh, their delicate eyes, and very publicly clutching their pearls. OP, you do you, and do what you need to do. I, for one, can't imagine being in my parents' home and forced to feel uncomfortable. So, my fiancé, 24 female, and I, 28 male, are supposed to get married in six months. However, something happened that's made me reconsider, and it's kind of blown up. I got into an argument with my fiancé about a week ago over something pretty trivial, but it ended up getting a bit heated. I tried to keep things calm, but she ended up getting really mad and slapping me in the face. I was kind of shocked for a minute, and then I just told her she needed to leave. She refused at first, but then I raised my voice slightly and said, you need to leave right now. She got some of her things and then went to stay with her sister. I'm now considering ending things with her after she was physical with me. I honestly couldn't believe she did that. However, I've gotten massive pushback from pretty much everyone around me telling me that ending our relationship and calling off our wedding over that is an enormous overreaction. She did apologize, but I told her it didn't change anything. My family is telling me I'm being crazy to end things over that. My friends are saying I'm massively overreacting. I pointed out that if I'd done that to her, she would have almost definitely left me and would be 100% in the right to do so. They're all saying that's completely different because I'm significantly taller than her and physically stronger, while there's no chance she could ever physically overpower me. That's true, but it doesn't change things. I'm being accused of weaponizing therapy language and appropriating the struggles of victims when what happened to me was in no way comparable to what genuine victims go through. I feel like I'm losing my mind and doubting my reasoning. Am I the idiot? You would be the idiot if you didn't end it. Can you imagine what she would do to possible future children when she gets angry and frustrated? She is not who you thought she was. Also, friends and family don't get a vote on your future happiness. He needs to take this blessing. She showed who she was before marriage. She's only getting worse. He needs to call off and ignore this horrible family and friends who are okay with him getting abused. Opie needs to hear this. No one else is in the relationship but him. It's his decision. Physical pain may be smaller, but the humiliation and hurt are exactly the same as if the roles were reversed. Violence doesn't have a gender. My brother's ex-wife would slap him once in a while, then it was more often. Then it was her throwing a phone at him. This was before cell phones. The base of the phone that housed the dialer hit him in the head and left a gash that needed stitches. Leave her now. 
My parents are divorced. My dad cheated. His wife is the woman he cheated with. I, a teen male, was seven when my parents told me that they weren't going to be married anymore. My oldest half-sister was a toddler at the time, my half-brother was born two months later, and my youngest half-sister was born almost two years after my half-brother. My parents split custody and parenting time with me, so I met my mom's for a week and then my dad's. Like I said, my dad ended up marrying the woman he cheated with. I'm not close to him. I still go because it's easier just to carry on than to make it a legal dispute. I don't really like being a dad, and I don't think I'll see much of him or his family when I turn 18. So, that's my background and where I'm at. On to the issue. Mom and I always cook together. She started me in the kitchen when I was a toddler, and she had me help, which was not really helping but just getting me involved. We started a recipe book when I was in kindergarten, and we'd make up recipes or find stuff and change it so it could be ours. And we tried to do one long cooking session every two weeks, even before the divorce. It's our thing, our special activity. My dad sometimes asks me if I still cook with mom, then asks if we still have the recipe book. He'll ask why I never cook for them, his family. My half-siblings have said they'd like to cook, but their mom isn't into it, so she doesn't. About a year ago, my oldest half-sister asked if she could cook with mom and me. I said no. My dad told me it'd be nice to include my half-siblings. I said it wouldn't be nice. This has come up a few times more. Dad keeps asking about it, and even though I no longer answer if we do cook or not, it's gotten so out of hand that my half-brother and oldest half-sister pestered their parents over it and Dad asked. Mom said no, but Dad realized she sounded surprised. So Dad got mad at me for not asking Mom before. I told him I hadn't wanted to include them. Dad told me to quit being such a brat. He told me I'm their big brother and it would be good for us if I spent some time with them. I told him I didn't want to, that I didn't care about spending time with them and that I'd rather spend time with someone else. He told me to ask my mom to include them because she'll do it if I ask. I told him I won't and he can't make me. He waited until I was back at his house and asked me again and I said I didn't ask. Dad called me a brat again and said I shouldn't shut my half-siblings out like this and he called me a jerk. Am I the idiot? Edit, my dad never cooks. Not the idiot. Your dad expects your mom to willingly work with the children from the woman who is half responsible for breaking up your family, and your dad expects the children from the other woman to be included in an activity and book for you and your mom alone? No, not in this lifetime. Hang in there, OP. You have less than a couple of years until you can put your dad and his second family in the rearview mirror. Since nobody in his house cooks except you, I suspect this is not as much about you building a relationship with your half-siblings as it is about your dad wanting a good home-cooked meal. If so, he better teach himself to cook or forget about it altogether. Next time he calls you a brat, call him on it. Tell him, if you wanted mom to help raise your kids, you shouldn't have cheated on her. My sister's husband Mark left her and their tween son Alex about a year ago. His reason was that Alex was too difficult to deal with. I think Mark is a piece of crap who blames his son for everything. Alex is a bit hyper and gets into trouble for being distractive, impulsive, etc. But he's not a bad kid. He loved his dad very much, but he's not stupid. He quickly figured out why his dad had left and hated his guts. Not that I blame him. He's been through a lot, and to put it very plainly, he thinks his mom might just up and leave one day too. Because of this, there'll be nights when he won't go to sleep unless his mom sits with him. My sister would never abandon him like his dad did, but Alex is way too anxious. He used to wake up several times throughout the night just to make sure she was still there. He's loads better now and my sister can go to bed in her room after putting him to sleep. Obviously, we don't tell anyone in our lives about this as it would be extremely embarrassing for Alex. I only know because I currently live with them. I'm helping around the house and with Alex. Unfortunately, Mark called a couple of nights ago wanting to apologize, allegedly, He and my sister had a nasty fight about Alex, and my sister ended up telling Mark about the sleeping problem. Mark was surprised, allegedly, but just hung up. I figured he felt some guilt towards his son for once, but I heard Alex going crazy in his room. When I went to calm him down, he just showed me his phone. He got exactly three texts from his dad telling him to man up, stop annoying his mom, and if he didn't man up, he'd tell all of Alex's friends. I was appalled. The second my sister came home, I marched straight to Mark's mom's house where I know Mark was staying and chewed him out. I don't think I'm the idiot for that. He deserved it. But Mark's mom, his sisters and their husbands and kids were home and I told them what Mark had been saying about his own child. I didn't have to. It was none of their business. 
but I knew they adored Alex and his mom was extremely angry. One of his sisters even went, what is wrong with you? Now Mark's mom is giving him a week to find somewhere else to live and he's yelling at me for essentially making him homeless and dragging his entire family into things. He called me a dumb kid and said I don't know what it feels like to be a parent and that he's human too. He admits that he could have been more decent with Alex too, so perhaps he's reflecting. I doubt it. I suppose I went too far regardless. Am I the idiot? For reference, I'm 21. My sister is 34. Mark is 35. Not the idiot. You didn't make him homeless, you just made him accountable. To be honest, I'm pleasantly surprised by Mark's family's response. Your sister is the one you should be asking, am I the idiot though, as she's the one that's going to face the fallout. Alex is lucky to have aunts and uncles, including you, who stick up for him, and I hope he's able to see and engage with that love. Frankly, I hope your sister keeps Mark out of Alex's life, but that's not something you can push for. It would need to be her and or Alex's decision. I would have totally told brother-in-law to man the heck up. He's living with his mommy. He ran out on his responsibility because his tween is acting like a tween. He's 35, not an 18-year-old. He obviously doesn't give a crap how his kid feels. I would not have been nice, and I would also advise your sister to get a screenshot of the text messages he sent to his son. It's the best ammo to use with a judge stating he doesn't care about his kid. You held him accountable, and now his parents don't want to deal with him since he messed around and found out.